Ape Out is the latest action game published by Devolver Digital, and on the surface it looks pretty simplistic. Donning a minimalist art style, the only goal is to break out of captivity by any means necessary, which usually means plastering your opposition into walls or each other to reach the exits. But as you continue on, you quickly realize that it takes this concept into pretty deep waters. By adding in new elements constantly, such as repelling armored guards crashing through the windows, bombs with a short fuse landing all around you, or the lights going out to test your stealth abilities. The result is something phenomenal. Not only does it feel satisfying to string together combos of destroying the threats in your way, but also addictingly stressful as you feel your heart pounding out of your chest when you succeed. It's a must play, there isn't much else out there like it. But what struck me most upon its completion was how it tied everything together through its abundance of style. I'm Snowman, welcome to Good Game Design, let's talk about it. If I had to describe Ape Out in one word, it would be chaos. And it somehow exemplifies this theming and its visuals, gameplay, and music all at the same time. Let's break that down a little bit. Right from the first loading screen, you can tell this game is unpredictable. Stop motion, paper mache-esque backgrounds represent the patchwork nature of the levels you have to escape from. You see, each stage in Ape Out seems to have its own basic layout that the game allows you to see every time you die, which generally involves moving to the right. But each individual room and placement of objects within seem to be procedurally generated, at least to a small degree. So while you can work toward the general direction of the finish line, you're still going to be guessing and thinking on your feet on a micro level. On top of this, the title cards for each area seem to pop in and out at random, with equally irregular sound effects, reinforcing the pandemonium to come in a creative way. But that's really just the beginning. How you interact with the baddies trying to take you down enhances this feeling of intensity and quick thinking. You learn very early on that you can grab people and hold them hostage, which creates a protective barrier from the front until they're shot and killed. You can throw them into another enemy to get rid of both at once, or even let the body shield use their last remaining bullet to shoot them down as well. You move slowly when you're holding someone though, so generally speaking, it's best to use them in a pinch and keep moving. It teaches you in this narrow hallway that shields can be extremely helpful when there's a plethora of guys shooting at once. I just kept grabbing the next victim and waiting until I had a chance to move forward. But in the next area, you realize this strategy doesn't work when you're surrounded from many sides. So even if you learn how each foe operates, you'll still have to constantly improvise when it comes to how they'll interact with each other. Like how a bomb expert will explode if they're shot, so you don't want to hold them for long. Or machine gun baddies don't let up after one bullet, so using a shield against them isn't very effective, though they're great to turn against others. Most of my time playing Ape Out was spent yelling at the screen as I had to swiftly think about the best course of action, and either escape the dangerous situation or look for better positioning to have an advantage. What I found really helpful is that even though the main gameplay loop is extremely hectic, it's very clear with the information it gives you at any given moment. For example, it shows how much damage you've taken by the amount of blood underneath you. A few drops is one hit, a lot of blood is two, and three is, well, death. So this helps you decide if you need to play extra cautious, or can try something a bit more reckless. Also, each enemy type has their own unique movement and attack patterns, but they're easily identifiable by their size and what hat they're wearing. You quickly learn the benefits and downsides of facing each one, and can use that knowledge almost immediately when they show up again. It becomes a gut reaction over time. It even shows you the controls on the ground, but it doesn't tell you what they do. This game wants you to try out your abilities in action, and experiment amidst the chaos. It's insanely challenging, but it still makes you feel like you have a chance because you're given all the information needed to succeed. Finally, the music is probably the coolest part of Ape Out's style. It actually plays a big role in the visuals as well. Each level you play is part of a four-side track of a record that flips and plays side B at the midway point. This is a unique way to give the player a short break to catch their breath that's more than just a simple loading screen. I also like that each record tells a different story. You'll go from running down 30 floors of a skyscraper, to the jungles of a war zone, to the various rooms and compartments of a cargo ship. But the sound design itself is extremely important to how Ape Out feels, which is odd because there isn't really a traditional soundtrack at all. Instead, it employs a series of drum loops and pre-recorded tracks that play at different times depending on what's happening on screen. If the action is ramping up, the drums get louder and more frantic, 
but if you're in a section without any bad guys, it's slower and subdued. Seriously, there's thousands of samples it chooses from to play in any given situation. I loved this part. When you hide out in the storage crates, it plays a light beat on the cymbals until you sneak attack an unsuspecting guard. It really feels like you're watching a movie unfold because the music is reactive instead of a stationary track. In essence, you get to create the records of music that you're playing, which not only seems like it took a lot of work to get right, but also gives a cohesive style to the whole affair. It feels like the developers really went above and beyond to make sure the basic goal of Ape Out was done in as compelling of a way as possible. It's so much more than just running around and throwing people to some jazz-infused drum beats. It's visually stunning, predictably unpredictable in its gameplay, and somehow catchy with its music even though it's improvised on the spot. It all comes together to spell out chaos in big bloody capital letters, and ties everything back to that theming with a giant memorable bow. From little touches like your score showing up in the blood of your victims, to constantly throwing dicey curveballs at you, Ape Out never feels old and has a style uniquely all its own. Thanks for watching another episode of Good Game Design. I'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty, my friends. Did you know you can gain access to all kinds of frosty rewards on the Snowman Gaming Patreon? You'll get monthly updates on current projects, newsletters of underappreciated games I recommend, and even the ability to vote on future video topics. You can join this list of beautiful people by helping support the channel over at patreon.com slash snowmangaming. Bye bye